Fifteen years ago, Vermont became the first state in the U.S. to give full marriage rights to same-sex couples. Fast forward to 2015, and now 37 states, including the District of Columbia, allow marriage between same-sex partners. The times, they sure are a-changing. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Robert Trainum, and joining me is Stacey Long-Simmons. She's the Director of Public Policy and Government Affairs for the National LGBTQ Task Force. Stacey, welcome to the program. Thank you. You know, what's interesting, as I mentioned a few moments ago, here we are in 2015. I never would have thought five years ago, six years ago, even 15 years ago, that marriage equality and the acceptance of of uh, being gay, uh, of being part of the LGBT community would be such um, uh, the common thing, if you will. Uh, I know we still have a long way to go, but I don't think there's ever been a movement, um, Stacey, that, is, that has happened so quickly. Would you agree with that? That's right. We are witnessing some amazing times in terms of the rapid pace at which we're seeing not just an increase in our protections, but also an increase in terms of visibility and exposure. Having President Obama actually reference our community first in his inaugural address and then again in the State of the Union address was just unprecedented and really signaled for us a strong commitment to um, continue to see many, as many ways as possible for us to um, receive some progress. You know, Stacey, as I mentioned uh, before a few moments ago, we, we've come a long way uh, as a community, but there's still a long way to go. Uh, and I want to focus on three things. One is economic security. Secondly is police violence. And third is religious liberties. Let's start with religious liberties first. Talk to us about where there still needs to be some advancement. Sure. So one of the problems is there are people who have decided to use religion as a, a way to cloak discriminatory intention. And we're very concerned by the number of states. There are probably uh, 11 states where we've seen different bills introduced and over a, a hundred different um, uh, measures, legislative measures that have been introduced by legislators who are really intending to um, stir up a particular threat of concern or, or fears uh, amongst people of faith and really um, convince them that uh, it is important to preserve their religious liberties and to do so means they have to carve out an exemption, ex an exception in non-discrimination law. So we're seeing lots of ways in which um, existing non-discrimination protections and housing or in employment or in you know public retail settings etc where people are allowed to just say huh that doesn't agree with my religion and so I'm gonna you know shut the door on those people an example of that would be for example if two individuals wanted to get married of the same sex and uh, they wanted to get a wedding cake and the wedding cake or the owner of the bakery is um, a, a particular religion they will say nope we're not we're not going to bake that cake and the reason why is because uh, my religion tells me no they're, they're right there's I mean some that's a common that. example the photographer the sure. wedding venue the baker but I think that people really need to pay attention to it's not just limited to the ability to actually have the wedding services of your choice right. it really goes beyond that I mean if you think about the vulnerability of our youth and LGBTQ youth actually are about 40 percent of the homeless youth in this country if you think about homeless youth being able to access a shelter. Many of the shelters and um, food services and other social service providers also are institutions of faith. And so if they're making decisions about how they can serve a community based on religious beliefs and would discriminate against you know, vulnerable populations, sure. that's a problem. We've got about 20 seconds left. Unfortunately, I want to talk about uh, economic security, meaning unfortunately we're running out of time. Very quickly, walk us through economic security. So one of the things that's true for our community is we're still fighting for explicit federal level protections in employment. And because of the long time um, years of not having employment protections, we're behind the eight ball All in right. terms of having those protections. And unfortunately, we're out of time. Thank you very much for joining us. And thank you for joining us for this edition of Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Robert Trainum. Have a great day. Bye-bye.